Hello and welcome to A Daily Purpose Bible Study and Devotional, a podcast by Our Given Purpose. I am your host, Tori. Please take a moment to share this podcast with a friend and let others know they can find A Daily Purpose on all major podcasting platforms and on YouTube. If you have your Bibles, let us open today's session with a portion of the assigned reading. Turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 13. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verses 1 through 19. In the course of time, Amnon, son of David, fell in love with Tamar, the beautiful sister of Absalom, son of David. Amnon became so obsessed with his sister Tamar that he made himself ill. She was a virgin, and it seemed impossible for him to do anything to her. Now Amnon had an advisor named Jonadab, son of Shemiah, David's brother. Jonadab was a very shrewd man. He asked Amnon, Why do you, the king's son, look so haggard morning after morning? Won't you tell me? Amnon said to him, I am in love with Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Go to bed and pretend to be ill, Jonadab said. When your father comes to see you, say to him, I would like my sister Tamar to come and give me something to eat. Let her prepare the food in my sight so I may watch her and then eat it from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill. When the king came to see him, Amnon said to him, I would like my sister Tamar to come and make some special bread in my sight so I may eat from her hand. David sent word to Tamar at the palace, Go to the house of your brother Amnon and prepare some food for him. So Tamar went to the house of her brother Amnon, who was lying down. She took some dough, kneaded it, made the bread in his sight, and baked it. Then she took the pan and served him the bread, but he refused to eat. Send everyone out of here, Amnon said. So everyone left. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food here into my bed so I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the bread she had prepared and brought it to her brother Amnon in his bedroom. But when she took it to him to eat, he grabbed her and said, Come to bed with me, my sister. No, my brother, she said to him, don't force me. Such a thing should not be done in Israel. Don't do this wicked thing. What about me? Where could I get rid of my disgrace? And what about you? You would be like one of the wicked fools in Israel. Please speak to the king. He will not keep me from being married to you. But he refused to listen to her. And since he was stronger than she, he raped her. Then Amnon hated her with intense hatred. In fact, he hated her more than he had loved her. Amnon said to her, Get up and get out. No, she said to him, Sending me away would be a greater wrong than what you have already done to me. But he refused to listen to her. He called his personal servant and said, Get this woman out of my sight and bolt the door after her. So his servant put her out and bolted the door after her. She was wearing an ornate robe, for this was the kind of garment the virgin daughters of the king wore. Tamar put ashes on her head and tore the ornate robe she was wearing. She put her hands on her head and went away, weeping aloud as she went. Dear Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verses 1 through 19. Dear friends, we have the privilege of having our Bible study and devotional being as one today. So please join me as we continue diving into this passage of scripture and we will focus on 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 2. So please highlight 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 2. Emotionally Sick by founding writer Tori Slaughter. 
In life, we are often confronted with a myriad of emotions that can shape our thoughts, decisions, and actions. While emotions are an integral part of our human experience, it is crucial to approach them with wisdom and discernment. In today's Bible study and devotional, we will explore the valuable lesson from 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 2, shedding light on how emotions should serve as a gauge rather than a guide in our lives. Understanding the Context 2 Samuel 13, 2 recounts a distressing event involving Amnon, one of King David's sons, and his intense infatuation with his half-sister Tamar. The verse reads, And Amnon was so tormented that he made himself ill because of his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and it seemed impossible for Amnon to do anything to her. So the Greek word tormented here is Aterio, which conveys a sense of being troubled or distressed. Emotions as a gauge, not a guide. So Amnon's emotions in this passage serve as a stark reminder that our feelings should not dictate our actions. While Amnon's infatuation was intense, it is vital to recognize that emotions alone are not a reliable guide for making decisions. They can cloud our judgment, lead us astray if we allow them to control us. Emotions are a gauge, providing us with valuable insights into our inner state and the experiences we encounter. They offer a window into our desires, fears, and vulnerabilities. However, it is our responsibility to navigate these emotions with wisdom so that we can ensure they align with our values, principles, and the greater good, God's greater good. Wisdom and discernment. In moments of intense emotion, it is essential to pause and seek discernment. This can be achieved through prayer, reflection, seeking counsel from trusted individuals, and studying God's word. In the Greek language, the word sophia, embodies the concept of wisdom. It encompasses insight, understanding, and the ability to apply knowledge in a way that aligns with God's truth. Proverbs 4-7 beautifully reminds us, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom, and whatever you get, get insight. By seeking wisdom, we allow ourselves to view our emotions from a broader perspective. We evaluate whether our feelings align with God's principles, whether they honor others, and whether they contribute to the well-being of ourselves and those around us. So, dear friends, as we journey through life, let us remember the lesson from 2 Samuel 13 too. Emotions, while very significant, should serve as a gauge rather than a guide They can reveal our inner state and provide insight, but they should not dictate our actions. Through seeking wisdom and discernment, we navigate our emotions with clarity and align them with God's truth. May we strive to cultivate emotional intelligence, embracing the valuable role emotions play while grounding ourselves in the discernment that God graciously provides. By doing so, we can make sound decisions, nurture healthy relationships, and live a life that honors God and serves others. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we lift our injured, broken, depressed, and lonely hearts to you. We know that you are our healer and fully satisfy all of our needs. Please help us to look to you when we are troubled by vexing or impure thoughts. Help us love ourselves, others, and you as we purpose forward in this life. In Jesus' name, amen. Emotionally Sick by founding writer Tori Slaughter 
One of the greatest joys of studying the Bible is the opportunity to share our insights with others. As we journey through the Bible in a year, you can join us on YouTube or your favorite podcasting app for an uplifting message, Bible reading, motivation, and to create discipline. These devotionals offer the perfect chance to initiate a conversation about God's Word. For more ministry resources, please visit OurGivenPurpose.com. We are deeply grateful to all those who support our ministry and podcast. Your donations allow us to provide this valuable content. We would be honored to have you as part of the Our Given Purpose family. If you feel led to contribute financially and become part of the Our Given Purpose ministry through a one-time or monthly contribution, you will help us to spread God's message and connect with people all over the world. Remember, you have seeds to sprinkle and don't lose sight of the ones falling on you. Where will they grow? By the road and shallow soil and the thickets? Or will they find a home in good soil to flourish and produce a good work? What God has begun in you, he will complete. Have faith and be bold. Thank you for listening to today's devotional by founding writer, Tori Slaughter. Please visit OurGivenPurpose.com to get on our phenomenal mailing list, connect with our contributing writers, partner with Our Given Purpose, and of course, to share. Share this podcast with a friend right now.